take two on this podcast journey. Several months ago, pre-pandemic, I launched my first podcast series called Katie Chat. I'd been wanting to start a podcast, and I figured if I didn't do it in that moment, then I never would. I was working as a social media manager and marketing manager, and podcasting was just something I wanted to learn and incorporate into my job. My goal was to try it out on myself, work out the kinks, and then start one for the company I was working for. The first thing I learned, and learned very quickly, was that putting together a podcast series was a lot more work than I thought. But I also wanted it all. I wanted social media pages, websites, wanted to do photo shoots, create all these graphics, etc. I was lucky to have help, but in the end, Rona won. But you know what? It was actually kind of okay because, to be honest with you, I wasn't happy with it. It felt super forced, and above all, it wasn't me. I focused way too much on what I thought other people wanted, and I wasn't able to bring my full creative approach to it. Most importantly, it didn't light that fire in my stomach, and that was proof that I wasn't passionate about it. What good would a podcast be to me and my audience if it lacked passion? For a while, I didn't really want to start up another podcast. I felt drained, and I wondered where my creative touch and inspiration had run off to. It's safe to say that 2020 hasn't been the kindest to most of us, but you know what? I'm tired of living the way that I have. I may not be sure of a lot of things right now, but I know this. From the beginning, I knew that I was a creator. From dance to writing, to digital media. Creating is just something that sets my soul on fire. And I'm refusing to let my failed attempt, I don't like to use the word failed, but I'm refusing to let that attempt of my last podcast, as well as a little bit of embarrassment from its downfall, to be turned to fear of creating another one. You don't always get it on the first try. How many times have you tried something before you actually succeeded? For many listeners that may not know me, I grew up a competition dancer. And in the 20 years of my dance career, I was addicted to learning, growing, and perfecting my craft. I wouldn't say that I had much natural dance talent, but I can assure you that I worked my butt off. I oftentimes felt knocked down or taken back by setbacks. However, I refused to let anything stop me from reaching my goals. I had even come up with a saying I always told myself during those tough times, and it went like this. My God-given talent wasn't to dance, but to rise every time I fall. Some falls were harder to stand up from others, but I refused to stay on the ground. Oftentimes, I like to share my challenges and victories online, mostly through Instagram, in the hopes that I could help or inspire at least one other person. I've actually had several people over the years message me and thank me for a certain post because they had been going through the same thing or after watching me take on certain things, it inspired them. And you know what? That's my goal for this platform, to do the same thing. All right, so enough about me. Let's get into the gory details about this podcast. I'll start with the title, Penny for Your Fears. I usually conjure up most of my ideas while taking a shower. I don't know the exact psychology behind it, but the mixture of hot water, steam, the sound of running water, and removing grime from the day ended up being the perfect ingredients for this concoction. I guess I killed two birds with one stone with this title. The title's a playoff of saying, Penny for Your Thoughts. You know the saying someone will say to another when they want to know what they're thinking? The second is Penny symbolize something so special to me. They represent the person who is responsible for my big crazy dreams and who inspired me to dream them in the first place. My grandma was my best friend in the whole world. And the day that she passed away was the day that my heart cracked. She was kind, gentle, intelligent, and oh, so talented. She could sing and dance. It wasn't just good. She was incredible. She sang on the radio, and at 19 years old, 
she was offered an opportunity to sing on Broadway. Her mom wouldn't let her go to the Big Apple, so she started a family. My mom used to tell me every time they went to a play or to the opera, she would glance over at her mom and watch tears fall from her eyes. Because she didn't want to be in the audience. She wanted to be up on that stage performing. My mom, but I call her little Debbie, didn't get the performing arts gene. She actually raised dirt bikes. <laughs> I know, and just imagine this little 5'2", dainty blonde babe racing dirt bikes. I was young when my grandma passed away, and my dance career was just getting started. I had auditioned to be a company member at my dance studio, and her last day on earth was the day we found out that I had made it. It was almost like she was holding on just for that. When she left this earth, she instilled a part of her soul into mine, and like magic, my love for the arts and appreciation for it was so much deeper than it had ever been. Being engulfed in fine arts and fighting for a shared dream of performing in New York was how I was able to still feel her presence. Totally deviating from the pennies, but getting to that now. My grandma and I hung out all the time. Both my parents worked full time, so a lot of my summers and school breaks were spent at my grandparents' house. But to be honest, most of the time I would just pack up my little suitcase and tell my mom that I wanted to sleep over with my grandma and the Dobermans. Anyway, my grandma was super superstitious, and being so young, I just thought she was a little bit crazy. Anytime we went somewhere and she saw a penny, she would make me pick it up and put it in my shoe. Not sure how I ever let this one slide because I am a germaphobe. And now here we are, almost 25 years old, still picking up pennies off the ground and shoving them into my shoe. If you look inside any of my shoes in my closet, I can guarantee you'll find a penny in each one. So that's how Penny for Your Fears is born. So now we have a title for a podcast. Great. Now what? Now it was time to tame my frantic and wild mind and focus and plan my ideas. This was actually a struggle for me because I'm the most tight B-ish type A person, but I really just like to call that organized chaos. You know those gumball machines you see in the front of restaurants and stores where you put a quarter in, turn the knob, and a gumball pops out? Well, now imagine that the knob got stuck and all the gumballs start pouring out at once. That's how my brain feels when I'm beginning to create something. All of these words, ideas, colors, movements, pictures come flying out. And while that can sometimes be overwhelming, it is comforting to sort them and to place them in their designated files. Sorting them can sometimes take a long time and it can also be a challenge to finish, but the job usually gets done. I've always wondered if there was something wrong with me and the way that I operated because I felt like no one performed in this manner. And it's probably because my mom is the complete opposite. Like she is the most textbook definition of a type A person. Luckily, I had a friend recommend me to take the 16 personalities quiz online. 16 personalities has grouped different personality types into four houses. Kind of like Harry Potter, except instead of Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, and Slytherin, we have Analysts, Diplomats, Centennials, and Explorers. After taking the quiz and reading my results, I was actually a little bit creeped out because it was extremely accurate. My results landed me in the Diplomat category as a mediator. 16 Personalities defines a mediator as... Someone who possesses the introverted, intuitive, feeling, and prospecting personality traits. These are rare personality types and tend to be quiet, open-minded, and imaginative. And they apply a caring and creative approach to everything that they do. Mediators can come across as shy or quiet, but they live vibrant and passionate inner lives. A rare personality which makes them often 
feel out of step with the world. Craving opportunities for creative self-expression, I always found projects in school a way to showcase that. For example, in the seventh grade, in my language arts class, we were studying Edgar Allan Poe. After reading several of his works, we were assigned a project. Finally, this is how I learn. By getting my hands dirty and creating. I was a good test taker, but I couldn't stand studying. I felt like the passion and excitement for a subject was being drained by the stress of trying to obtain a certain score and memorize. Anyway, the project was to either create a movie poster, write a short story, or make a short film about one of the works we had read in class. Of course, I wanted to make all three, (laughs) but I chose to create a movie poster for The Telltale Heart. I sat in school the rest of the day, daydreaming about this project. Mapped out the whole thing, and I couldn't wait to get home and begin my creation. When I got home, I handed my mom the assignment, and she told me we could go to Walmart to get poster board. A poster board? When I had imagined my movie poster, I did not imagine it would be on an oversized sheet of paper. To me, school projects were sacred. We seldom had them, and they had to be constructed as so. So we went to Home Depot and bought a thick wooden board that stood four feet tall and weighed about 30 pounds. Next, we bought trim to line the outside of the board. At home, in my dad's workshop, where I eventually got banned from because my projects began to get a little um, messy. That's a different story, though. (laughs) I painted the structure black, and I instructed my dad to help me make a stand so the board could be propped up and stand out by itself. I then took red paint and painted the words, the telltale heart, and made it look like the words were written in blood. A little gruesome for a seventh grader, but... We love horror. My inspiration was the movie posters you see outside of a movie theater, you know, with the big light bulbs that flash. So I built a track along the board and secured the beaming light bulbs, fastened the wires underneath the track, and mounted the lights around my board. I now had a life-size wooden board movie poster with freaking lights. Already extra, very extra way too far. Already took it way too far, but I wanted to keep going and I wanted to see how far I could go and how I could challenge my creative abilities even more. Debating whether or not I should just paint the heart on the bottom and be done with it, which I definitely should have. Like I really could have just painted a heart on the board and been done with the thing, but something crazy hit me. I ran to the other side of the basement where we store all of our um, junk. I found the bin that was home to about 30 stuffed animals, grabbed it. We had actually gone to Dave and Buster's with my family and their friends a few months prior to this project. And one of the stuffed animals I won included two plush frogs kissing on a heart. So I cut off the frogs from the plush heart, took out a small amount of stuffing that was inside the heart. Then I inserted a deflated balloon. Next, I had my dad cut a hole in my movie board, glued the heart to the board, and made sure the hole in the heart lined up with the hole in the board. From the back of the board, I secured the balloon to a small pump that we used to blow up, you know, like playground balls and volleyballs. So now... If someone stands behind the board and slowly pumps, the balloon inside the plush heart inflates and then deflates. So it looks like the heart is beating. And then, of course, I had to have sound effects, had my little iPod touch, my little mini iHome speakers, illegally downloaded beating heart sound. And yeah, there we have it. My intention for this project and many of my other projects was never to come across like I was better than anyone else or wanted attention or praise. I was really just excited to see how far I could challenge my creative abilities. 
And to be honest, like, it, it's like the same feeling most people would get, you know, if they got an A on a test or something. I mean, I may, like I said, I made decent grades, but like, I, I almost like didn't care when I got an A. I mean, like, yes, yes, you want to get an A and, you know, you're excited and you want to tell your mom and you wanted her to put it on the fridge, but I don't know. It just didn't excite me and inspire me the way that projects did. I crave creative self-expression and enjoy creating stories and coming up with endless possibilities. Using my imagination and experimenting with my creativity it just enables me to explore my inner nature in my place in the world. I oftentimes find myself feeling very unfulfilled or moody if I can't act upon my ideas and crazy dreams. I like to express my innermost thoughts and stories through metaphors and fiction, so here's where I give a little twist to your traditional podcast. I've divided my episodes into small groups and placed them into chapters. Each chapter will follow a theme and ideas, maybe from a certain movie or TV show or book or who knows at this point what I'll come up with. And I'll include several quotes, analyses, and metaphors from them. So, we've talked about the title and the theme, but now the most important part, the message. In this case, fear. Fear is something that holds many people back from pursuing their hopes and dreams. And you know what? It's something I fight every day. I can only imagine how it affects others too. With this podcast, it is my hope to strip back the layers of not just my fears, but your fears. And make fear a little less scary. I have found myself growing tired of living in fear, big or small. And watching it hinder me from achievements I know I can achieve. What about you? What fears do you possess? What fears lie not just at the forefront of your mind, but also in the deepest parts of you, hidden, tucked away? Venture with me as we dive together into the unknown and conquer fear one podcast at a time. Thank you so much for listening to Penny for Your Fears' very first episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'm so excited to go on this journey with you. Be sure to follow Penny for Your Fears on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Penny for Your Fears. And check out our website at pennyforyourfearspodcast.com. See you next time.